Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Nice to see all of you here. Thank you for being the masked. That's hard to say. Uh, anyway, you all have your service booklet to follow along with, I hope. And uh, you know what? I'm going to get quiet now. I'm going to invite everyone to join me in that. And we're ready to worship God together. Our gathering again this morning is on page seven. I support the matter. Oh, my 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into the likeness of Christ from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that his skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining. And they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and to Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him. And Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with him, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 99 responsibly by half verse, repeating the refrain at the end. Let us confess the name of the Lord. The Lord is king, but the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim, and the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is high above all the people. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Lord. Almighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in you. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy God. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They call, they call upon the Lord, Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You are our God who forgave them, and have punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and worship upon him in his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Let us confess the name of the Lord. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians. Since then, we have such a hope. We act with great boldness, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. 
Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On page seven, our gospel hymn, Ancient Words. We've done it before. Master, 
it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, the chosen, my chosen. Listen to him. While the voice had spoken, when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one of any of the, any of the things they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. Just then a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks. It convulses him until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. All were astounded at the greatness of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Think of airline pilots or military pilots 
who see some kind of UFO and they're like, yeah, are you reporting this? Yeah, no, I'm not going to see anything. Yeah. Right. In that, they think that's probably just about as freaky as a glowing, transfigured person would see. But you know what I find interesting in these two accounts? Is that people are scared of and freaked out by the brightness of the light. The apostles, they're way down to sleep. This seems kind of a vision. We have the cloud and the vision. But nonetheless, in every account it says, they saw this, they saw and heard God speaking to Jesus, and he's glowing bright white, and they were terrified. Some of the people were probably terrified of Moses when he came down after an encounter with the holy God, and he's glowing enough that he's got to wear a shield over his face. People are afraid and terrified of the brightness of God, the light, Jesus, the light that comes into the world, that enlightens everybody, and people are afraid of it. And we shield our eyes, and we, we, we you know, we'd rather just have a nice, peaceful experience in church where nobody glows. Okay. I'm not singing songs. You want to be predictable? This is Mr. Petty, because I can't speak for all the denominations, okay? But by and large, it's just like when people see an angel, a messenger of God, and they're terrified. They just say, don't be afraid. But you know what? We live in a world today, I can't say unprecedented, but I will say in my lifetime, unprecedented time of darkness. Darkness has come over the land. And we can't pretend that's not true. But what I find interesting is that people don't seem to be afraid of the darkness. People seem to accept the darkness as just the way it is. Or let's get along to go along. Let's use horrible weapons to kill a bunch of people so we can sit on the top of all the darkness. We as Christians don't need to be afraid of the darkness because we know that the light of one little candle puts all the darkness away. And darkness can never overcome light. Light will always overcome darkness. And we need to embrace the glowing, glorious, greatness of God within ourselves because Jesus the light of the world is counting on you me to be that light today to be so transformed within ourselves that we say to hell with darkness I'm sick of it we're all going to hold up our light. We're going to let it shine. And if other people can't handle it, that's not our problem because the light of God will not be put out. And it needs to shine through us, out of the world. And that's nothing to be afraid of. People like to feel afraid. That's why we have scary movies and go on roller coasters and... Uh, Throw axes. <laughs> I saw the pictures. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> that like fun. We, all of the tale, so many of the tales of the future are dystopian, aren't they? Zombie apocalypse, the horrible viruses, people killing people, running out of food, all this. That's what the future holds. And you know what? I will maintain to this day that's why Star Trek is so far above Star Wars, you can't even compare them. Okay, that's fine. Right, I'm a Trek. Okay. But why? Why? Star Trek has a positive, if secular and probably atheistic, view of the future. Where people learn to get along. Where people learn to translate and share each other's languages. Where, where beings who are absolutely so different and can't be compared work together for the betterment of everybody. And not everybody is perfect, but the point is, that's a vision of a positive, hopeful future. So many of the others is about war and killing and who's in charge, who we need to look out for, who's trying to get over on who, who are the good guys, who are the bad guys. 
We have to reject the darkness and the dystopian future that we have presented to us through whatever means, even though it's happening right now. We have to speak out against evil. We cannot accept, gee, the world is awfully dark, that's a bummer. And I'm afraid that's what's happened. We become so immune to the darkness and the evil that is unleashed in our world. And I'm not saying this is only time in history, but it is. You, and you, and you, every one of us, and you, and you, you're the window, the conduit for that transfiguring glow through which God says, this glow, this is my beloved child. Listen to him. Not the powers of darkness. Listen to the one true hope. The one who shows us how to be the light in the world. And don't be afraid to let your light shine for others to see. That you may be the only beacon out of the darkness for someone else. Don't veil it. Because in Jesus, the veil has been torn. Amen. On page three, please stand and let us affirm the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed.
presiding bishop, for Marty, our bishop, for Melinda and Jerry, our priests, for Corrine, our postulant, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God. For all who serve God in God's church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, including those on our prayer list, Karen, Marietta, Joe, Frank, Maria M, Jack, Dick, Alan, Jerry, Kay, Sandra, Sharon, Tina, Shane, Rose, Ray, Jim, Harry, those for whom our prayer chain intercedes, and we pray for any others we may care to now name. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We will trust in you. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Russia in the face of such naked aggression. May they all receive justice and peace. We pray for Leah, Margo, Zoe, Adam, Abby, Franny, Aiden, Megan, as they prepare for confirmation, that they may be filled with the Holy Spirit. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Kenya. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Incarnation in Great Falls, Sarah Quay, Senior Warden. In the parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Camp Marshall and for Lynn and Michael Conaway, Emily and Stacy Pratt, and Les Crawford. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most oh, merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. No, no, no. no. Thanks, God, and let them go. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live serve you in the midst of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. All right, then. Ascribe to the Lord the honor through God's name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts. And the offering, the offertory again is on page what? Eight. Okay. Yeah. 
Hey, Jake, man, we are the light leaves. <laughs>
God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through Christ, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Luke and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My flesh is food in thee, and my blood is drink in thee, says the Lord. My flesh is food in thee, and my blood is drink in thee, says the Lord. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood dwell in me, and I in them. My flesh is food in thee. that Christ is transfigured for you, and feed our Christ in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
ski. And this is our first time. So uh, as a reminder, when you come forward, uh, I'll give you the host if you would like, wish it to be tainted in the cup. Hand it to her and she'll hand it back to you. Continuing on page six, let us, let us uh, pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you with the light and witness of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, and now and forever. I bless you in the name of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Creator of Christ and Spirit. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face, and the rains and the snows fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of God's hand. Amen. Alright, now we're going to be sent into the world singing on the back page. Songs of faith and praise.